So other bands going all the way with the participants and the fans who are here for the final game of the World Series. High blue sky with some very light fleecy clouds up above. Strong wind blowing from left to right field. And that right field line today will be the target for the Braves and the Yankees. The seventh game of the World Series is actually the point of no return for New York or Milwaukee. And so all that has gone before is today old news. To manipulate a phrase into the valley of the 60,000 plus, into the shadows of the house that Ruth built, will ride the great champions of the National League, the Braves, and the defending world champions and American League title holders, the New York Yankees. Fans are bustling and they're really moving around. There's a great excitement, naturally, whenever you come to the concluding game of the World Series. Everything uh, is being uh, based on one delivery, one swing of the bat, and so today, everything is resting on this, the seventh game of the World Series. The lineup now for today's game, which may turn out to be the most important lineup that either manager Fred Henney or Casey Stengel have assembled in this great year of 1957, uh, being announced to the fans here assembled. And so now, in order to pass along to you exactly what everybody here is letting, here are the lineups for the Milwaukee Braves visiting Yankee Stadium. Bob Hazel will be in right field. This fine youngster who is hopeful of doing something big to help his team today as he did during the regular season when he came up to help them. He is uh, certainly trying and will be trying, as will all of the lads, to do his very best for his ball club. Hazel has been up nine times. He has not had a base hit. He'll be in right field. Johnny Logan will be at shortstop, and he will bat second. Eddie Matthews will bat third and will play third. Hank Aaron will bat fourth and play center field. Wes Covington will be in left field. And he has made some of the great catches in the annals of the World Series play. Frank Torrey, the youngster from Brooklyn, New York, will be at first base for the Braves. And he will bat six. Felix the Cat Mantilla, still playing at second base in place of the injured Red Hangings, will be at second base. And he will bat seven. We'll do the catching, and he will bat eight. And Lou Burdett, who has pitched two complete games in this, the 1957 World Series, will be working today to help his Milwaukee Braves. And if he is able to do it, he will step into the annals of World Series history. In the two games that Burdett has worked, in a total of 18 innings, he's given up only 14 hits. He is allowed to two earned runs, one of them coming on a home run. He's given up three bases on balls, and he struck out ten, and his earned run average for the World Series is one run. For the New York Yankees, there's big news for the Yankee fans today. Hank Bauer leading off, and will play right field. Keenan Slaughter will bat second, and will be in left field. And Mickey Mantle will be back in the lineup, and he's playing center field. Yogi Barra will bat fourth and do the catching. <laughs> Joe McDougall will be at shortstop, and he will bat fifth. Tony Kubek will move in from center field to third base. Jerry Coleman will bat seventh, and he'll be at second base. And Joe Collins, who takes particular pride in taking a surveyor's slant down that right field line against right-hand pitchers will be at first base, and he will bat in the number eight spot for New York. John Larson, who entered baseball's one in a lifetime last year in the World Series with a perfect game, who has won a game in relief this year, will go to the mound for the Yankees. Larson worked up in Milwaukee. He worked seven and a third innings. He gave up five hits, two runs, one home run, four bases on balls, four strikeouts, and his earned run average is 2.45. Well, the Yankees are moving on to their positions, and we're waiting now as the first batter for the Milwaukee Braves, 
Tom Hayes, both standing off to his left, waits for Don Larson to come out and start taking his warm-up tosses. Now, fire Bill McKinley of the American League will work back of the plate. At first base will be Augie Donatelli. Joe Paparella of the American League will be at second base. And from the National League, Jock O'Connor will be at third. Down the right field line will be Nestor Charlotte of the American League. And Frank Sicori of the National League will be down the left field line. Again, we'd like to remind you, only in the interest of reporting, that there is a good, strong breeze blowing out towards right field. And it's just 296 feet, remember, down that right field line. And we have two right-handers going today. So we're just about seconds away now from the first pitch. Uh, the final game of the World Series. And as uh, Bob Hazel stands out there, he's been moved to the leadoff spot in the Milwaukee lineup. We're uh, all set to go. So I'm now ready to take you through the first four and a half innings of this, the final game of the World Series of 1957. The young man from Milwaukee, Earl Gillespie. Well, thank you very much, Bob Neal, and good afternoon, everybody. You know, Bob, as we look down on this beautiful diamond here at Yankee Stadium, it's with a touch of sadness that we realize that this is the last baseball game of the 1957 season. It's been a thriller all the way. Good races in the American and the National Leagues. And after 160 games, this one's going to decide the World Championship. Milwaukee will send up Bob Hazel as manager Brett Haney goes to a shift in his batting order. Hazel, who had been batting, down in the number seven spot, has been moved up to the leadoff position. He'll be followed by Johnny Logan and then third base for Eddie Matthews. A big fastballing right-hander who entered baseball's Hall of Fame with a crash last year with a brilliant, perfect no-hitter against the Brooklyn Dodgers in the Fall Classic. John Larson, six feet four, 228 pounds, 28 years old. One victory so far in the series. Here is the lineup of left-handed batters. Quick one is called. This game is underway. Boy, and believe you me, the blue chips are down today in the major leagues. Bob Hazel is looking for his first place into the series. He's been up nine times. Larson delivers. The curve swung on. Here is a line foul down the right field line. Turns off the railing in front of the box seats. It's picked up down the right field line by Nestor Shylock of the American League, who is working on the right field foul line, Frank Sikori down the left field line. Spike two count on Bob Hazel. Manager Brett Haney has Connie Ryan coaching at third base. Johnny Riddle is down at first base. Larson ready, delivers. Fastball, swing on this, quick three, fuck him up. So there is strike out number one for Don Larson. Brings up, switched up, Johnny Logan, who has sparkled defensively in the series. And his bat spoke out loudly in Sunday's game at County Stadium when he doubled on the left field line in the tenth inning to drive in the tying run, making the score at that time five and five. Johnny Logan, four hits, 22 times at bat, right-handed swinger, and there's a ground ball to the third baseman, Tony Kubek. Here's the throw. He is out, and that's two away. Two up, two down in the first inning. The batter is third baseman, Eddie Matthews. Eddie with four base hits and 18 at bats. Is hitting at 222. Two doubles, one home run, two runs batted in. A left handed swinger, two outs, nobody on base, the first inning of play. Don Larson gets his sign for Yogi Berra. Here is the pitch, and Matthews looks at a strike and call on the upside corner above the knees. Larson, like his teammate Bob Turley goes without a windup. So as we mentioned yesterday, these Milwaukee hitters have to be ready up there at the plate. And he's put two is on the left side corner knee high, and Matthews finds himself in the hole. Swipe two count. The Braves, 25-year-old third baseman, who has been one of the great stars in the National League. Swipe two count. Henry Aaron on deck. And here's Swipe three. He is all out. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base to score at the end of the top half of the first inning. They're walking up the, the Yankees coming to bat. In the last half of the first inning, the New York Yankees send up Hank Bauer, Enos Slaughter, and Mickey Mantle. In the outfield for Milwaukee, West Covington is in left. Henry Aaron in center field, Bob Hazel in right field. Eddie Matthews at third base, Johnny Logan at short. Mantilla at second base, and Frank Story at first base. Lou Burdett, coming back with only two days left, on the mound, and Del Crandall is doing the catching. Burdett, 
pitched a brilliant ball game, trusting Whitey Ford last Monday, one to nothing at Milwaukee County Stadium. He has two victories in the series. He won the second game of the series, four to two, here at Yankee Stadium. He has held the Yankees scoreless for 15 consecutive innings. Hank Fowler, right-handed batter, one of the heroes yesterday, who lined a home run off really for Ernie Johnson in the seventh inning to win the game three to two. Fowler, strong right-handed batter, the first pitch swung on a chopper that is a fair ball. Left field line, next to Lacey. Here's Fowler, winning in the second race. The throw is going into the shortstop, and he pulls up a second. A fair ball, Mark down the line. A double for Hank Bauer. And he now has hit safely in the last 14 consecutive World Series games, establishing a new World Series record. Hank Bauer. Now the Yankees have a run in a scoring position on second base. Nobody is out for that left fielder, Enos Water. Enos Water with three hits and eight trips, batting at 375. One double, no RBI. The outfield playing around so it's left as he takes quick one of the outside corner knee high. Left-handed Warren Spahn, who just two days ago was down in bed with a 104-degree temperature, is loosening up on the left center field bullpen for the Braves. That temperature returned to normal yesterday. He had a case of the grip. Right-hander for that delivers, the pitch is running out of front behind the plate, a foul ball, and it's like two. So far in the six games, the plate attendance has been 333,505. And veteran scribes who have covered World Series for a good many years have said that this has been one of the most exciting, interesting series in the last decade. Only one left side of score, that was registered by the Yankees. In that 12 to 3 victory last Saturday afternoon. Strike two count. Runner on second base, nobody out. Burdett delivers. A swing and a roller foul down that third base side, and it's still strike two. Frank Crisetti is coaching at third base. Charlie Keller at first base. A strike two count on Slaughter. And on deck, one of the great stars in the National Pass time, Mickey Mantle. Returning to active duty, injured his shoulder last Saturday in Milwaukee. Under the stretch goes Burdett, he delivers, and it's outside, ball one. Ball one is strike two. This series is even in home runs. The Yankees have seven, and the Braves have seven. Defensively, the Braves have quick drop ten double plays, the Yankees four. Henry Aaron is shading slaughter around towards left center. The infield is straight away. Power on second base, nobody out. The one and two pitch, and there's a swing and a ground ball stab. They have the runner trap now between second and third. They're running a back towards second base. Matthews looks to Logan. Logan to Burnett. Burnett back, and he is safe. And the Yankees have runners on two runners on second base. Burnett through to Johnny Logan, the first tag of Hank Power. And Enos Water went sliding in the second base. And from all the way across the players are playing the old Brooklyn Dodgers. As there are two Yankees on second base. Logan tagged both runners. But second base belonged to Hank Power and Slaughter is out. So that'll be a fielder's choice. And once again, a Yankee base runner. He made it a tag. And a group to play at second base, just as a Yankee runner did yesterday. But there is one man out. Right here in center field, Mickey Mantle, batting left-handed against the right-hander, Luberdet. Mantle batting at 267. The first pitch to Mickey is outside of all. Ball one and no strikes. That play is scored. If you score by numbers at home, one, six, five, six, one, six. Burdett to Logan, to Matthews, to Logan, to Burdett, to Logan. All one and no strikes on Mickey Mantle. On deck is Kachi Yogi Berra. The Yankees with power on second base. One out, last half of the first inning, no score. Already a lot of excitement of this deciding game of the 1957 World Series. Mickey Mantle steps out of the batter's box. He has been hampered 
by a very sore right shoulder. Luberdet has the sign, delivers, and here's a point of it. Ball one and strike one, and that swing has given Yankee fans thrills now for a few years. Shrug of the shoulders by Mickey Mantle. Mickey was quoted as saying that his leg feels fine. That was his main concern starting the series. His left leg, the 1-1 one -one pitch, and it's just outside ball two. Hank Fowler, run off with a ground double just on the line, down the left field side. Slaughter, out. On a fielder's choice, more or less, as they made the first play on Hank Fowler, and he trapped Fowler between second and third, and they shot ground ball back to Burdett. Ball two and a strike one count. Fowler takes the big lead off second base. One man is out, the pitch, and Mantle swings hard, this is strike two. Ball two and a strike two count. Ball two and strike two. Lou Burdett, who during the National League campaign chucked up 17 victories against 90 defeats. 30-year-old right-hander, 6'2", 180 pounds, and soon he'll be enjoying the sunshine down in Sarasota, Florida, where he makes his home during the offseason. 2-2 two -two pitch. A swing and a ground ball. Stamp by Burnett. He's ready to throw to first base. Mantle is out, and Bauer holds up a second. High chopper. Will Burnett leaping high. Came down with a baseball. So there are two outs. And a Yankee runner is still on second base as they capture Yogi Berra. Moves up towards the play. who year in and year out has proved a clutch performer in the postseason classic. Yesterday, proved wise, one of the third left-handed batters in the American League. And he's proving it right now as they look like they're going to walk him intentionally. They are. Yogi Berra conceding an intentional walk. This will bring up shortstop Gilby Kubu. First place is open, and Burnett would rather face the right-handed batting shortstop of New York. Ball three outside. Yogi Berra yesterday got his first extra base hit of the series. And as far as the Yankees were, were concerned, it was a really big one. A two run blast on the right field seat. Ball four to Berra. The first walk given up by Burdett. This, an intentional walk. And the Yankees have runners on first and second base with two outs. No score the last time of the first inning. Shortstop Joe McDougall. Batting 250. Five hits in 20 trips. No extra base hits, two RBIs. And Gill is up there with teammates Hank Bauer at second base, Yogi Berra at first base. The great job field playing around towards left. The infield is straight away. Burnett delivers. The pitch is inside. Ball one. Ball one and no strikes. McDougal steps away from all play. That incidentally was the first intentional walk of this series. No strike. Burnett taking his time. Every pitch is so very important this afternoon. The pitch to McDougal, and it's in close. Ball two, two and nothing. Rookie third baseman, Tony Kubek, who has proved the most versatile star in the series, has played left. He has played center. Today he's playing third base. New baseball does that to Lou Burnett. Lou turning around, showing us that red number 33 on the back of his gray uniform. All right, he's in trouble here in the last half of the first. And he's trying to rise to the occasion. Yankee runners on first and second. Two outs, Gil McDougall, tough butt ball player, has called the time. Now he is coming about his box. For a death touch to deep breath. Up on the rubber, into the stretch, arms down, delivers. And quick one is called on the inside corner of Upper Knees. Ball two, strike one. Again, Gil McDougall walks out of the batter's box. He's in a tough spot here, trying to deliver right now for Casey Singel of the Yankees. And the Yankee fans across the nation. Burdett checking with Del Crandall. 
Ball two, strike one. The pitch on the way, and it's ball three. Low and outside, and a bat that now loads him up. That brings up Tony Kubek. Ball three and strike one. Beautiful day out here at Yankee Stadium. The temperature is 65 degrees. The wind is blowing out towards the inviting right field seats. All three, strike one. On Joe McDougall. Power leads off second. Farrell leads off first. 3-1 pitch. Swung on a high infield fly. Eddie Matthews moving down the third base line. Getting out of this ball. Mike's the catch and that retires the side. Good pitching by Lugardet. And the last out of the first inning. No runs, one hit. No errors. And two on the left hand base. At the end of the first inning, the score. The Yankees something. The Braves something. Henry Allen leads off on the lucky in the second. Aaron coming to the story to face the right-hander Don Larson. Aaron, one of the hitting stars of the series, has nine hits and 23 at bats. He's hitting at 391, one triple, three home runs, five runs batted in. While talking with Hank Mauer down around the batting cage uh, this morning, Hank said, "Boy, that Aaron really has great wrist power, doesn't he, Earl?" He was speaking mainly, of course, of a home run yesterday in the bullpen in deep left center field. And a fastball is in close. It's ball one and no strikes. Barr was telling me that not too many baseballs find their way into that bullpen out there. It's four hundred two feet from the plate. The pitch curve is a strike call. Outside corner around the knees. And it's even up on Aaron. It's ball one and strike one. Henry Aaron. Right-handed batter. And a time is called by the umpire. Bill McKinley is calling for the baseball to look it over. Aaron, who was born February 5th, 1934. 23-year-old outfielder. Started the season in right field. Here's the six on the way, and it's in close, ball two. He was just into center field after the collision involving Billy Bruton and Felix Mancia on a high pop-up at Pittsburgh Forbes Field midway through the 57th season. As they swing and they loop in a left field, coming in fast here, Slaughter is in for the late set. Henry Aaron rounds the bag at first place and holds up. And Henry becomes the first player in the series to come up with that 10th base set. A single to left. And it brings up the left fielder, Wes Covington. And they just announced that Henry Aaron has hit playfully in all seven games. Now here is Wes Covington, a left-handed bat, and he takes the ball to throw. Wes, after getting off to a flying start in the first two games, with four base hits, has gone hitless since. He now has four for 21, batting 190, one double, and one run batted in. He's up there with teammate Henry Aaron in first base. Nobody out, and a switch is called on the outside corner, as Larson is keeping that ball low on the base. Ball one is strike one. First baseman Frank Torrey follows coming to the batting order. All on a strike, one no score, second inning. Aaron on first place for the base hit. West Covington, who possesses good power, has not been able to catch a hold of a long one so far in the series. He's going to find it down the first place line. A beauty picked up by Larson. He tosses to. Bill Collins for a play at first place, and there is a fine sacrifice. West Covington went around to that batter's box at the last second, and one and one between the mound and first base, moving Henry Aaron to second base. That play is scored one to three. Brings up first place with Frank Corey, who's been up eight times and has three hits. Two of his three hits, home runs, and long drives. One at Milwaukee, one here at Yankee Stadium. Johnny Riddle 
Hill going through some signs down on that first place coaching box. And the stretch goes. Don Weissman will flex to the left-handed batter as a curve that breaks low inside on that ball one. Connie Ryan usually gets out the Milwaukee signs. Now Connie is in the front end of the batter of the coach's box. Sometimes that's a sign where the coach is standing in the box. Runner on second base. One man is out. The outfield playing around the right. The pitch is a curve low inside. Ball two. Braves first scoring opportunity. They were three up, three down in the first inning as Don Larson registered a couple of strikeouts to Bob Hazel and Eddie Matthews. Yeah, well, they lead off single and moved to second base with a sacrifice by West Covington. Ball two, no strikes on Tory, and ball three is low inside at three and nothing. Larson is being very careful with the left handed batter with the right handed swinger, Felix Mantilla, on deck. No score. Braves batting in the second. Jerry Coleman playing deep at second base, standing on the edge of the outfield draft. 3 0 pitch, and ball four is outside. <laughs> now that very well could have been an unintentional, intentional one. As he did not come near that place, hoping to have Corey go after a bad pitch. The Yankee bullpen action as a right-hander, Tom Sinovan, and a southpaw, Whitey Ford, begin cranking up their arms. Felix Mancia, right-handed batter, hitless in the series, nothing for six. Runners on first and second base. One man is out. The curve is a call strike. That one caught the outside corner, knee high. Mancia is a tall slim hitter. Only packs about 150 pounds. Don Larson looks him over, delivers. The curve is outside. He was trying to swing, held up the ball, bounces in front of the plate. Yogi Barris scrambling, picked up that ball with Milwaukee runners holding on at first and second. Felix Mancia is listed at 160 pounds. He's tall at six feet one. From Isabella, Puerto Rico. He's a youngster who has been brought up through the Braves farm system and was a teammate of Henry Aaron a few years ago down in Jacksonville, Florida. 23 years old. And he has proved a valuable utility man for Fred Haney as he has played three positions in the infield, third, short, and second base. Playing second today in place of the injured Red Chaney. Right-handed batter, the 1-1 one -one pitch, one on a fly ball deep on the left field. This is sending Slaughter back on the run. He's back battling. He's waiting for it. Makes the catch. Aaron tags the second base, going to third, and the throw goes into second base. Long fly ball deep to left off the bat of Felix Mancia. Deep enough to allow Aaron to tag at second base and go to third. So there are two outs. And the Blades now have runners on first and third base. Whitey Ford has taken a seat on the bullpen bench and is placed out there as the second by Bobby Stent. So it's the left hander Stent, the right hander Sturdivant. Warming up for old Casey Stengel. Runners on first and third base. Del Crandall, right hander batter, and he takes strike one. Fastball forward him there, knee high. Sandal has two hits and 15 at bat. That figures out to a 133 batting average. No extra base hits, no runs batted in. Sandal batting with runners on first and third base. Two outs. John Larson fires away, and it's just outside of all. It's even up. Ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one. Larson, who had 10 victories against 40 feet during the American League campaign, delivered way outside, ball two. The pitcher Lubert, that is due to hit match, Don Deck is the layoff man, right fielder Bob Hazel. One of the most interesting things to me in the series, being with the National League Milwaukee Braves during the season, has been listening and talking with one of the great managers of our time, Casey Stengel. The only time we see Casey is down at spring training. 2-1 pitch. 
Swung on a ground ball to the third base, moves left, picks it up, throws the second base, first play retires the side. Cranwell forcing Cody at second base. Tony Kubek to Jerry Coleman. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. For the second, Tony Kubek, Jerry Coleman, and Joe Collins. First three men at base, right hander, Blue Burdett. <laughs> scored in the series with the series tied three games apiece. The Yankees have scored 25, the Braves have scored 18. Except for that 12 to 3 game at Saturday, they have been close games, decided by no more than two runs. The Yankees took the first one, three to one, the Braves the second game four to two, then it was Yankees 12 to three, the Braves seven to five in ten innings, one to nothing Braves on Monday and yesterday, three to two Yankees. Series here in 1957. Tony Kubek, left handed batter. Tony with seven hits and 24 times at bat. Hitting 292. And Burdett comes down with a first pitch. It's a ball outside. Pitch broke away from the southpaw hitter. Kubek has two home runs. Four runs batted in. Ball one and no strikes. Burdett's next. Oh, evidently he was taking as he dropped his left hand down around the trademark of the bat and watched that pitch go by. Ball two, strike one. Nobody on base, nobody out. Last half of the second inning. Here's a swing and a miss. And it's even up at two and two. October the 10th. The last game of the baseball season. And what a big game. The winner will be the world champion. Ball two, strike two. Outfield playing around to the right. Burdett delivers, and there's a swing and a heart. That is stabbed by Eddie Matthews. There's a throw to first place. He is out. Good play. Left-handed pickup by Eddie Matthews in the hot corner. Eddie Matthews with a hit to a youngster who has developed into one of the outstanding defensive third basemen in baseball. One man is out, nobody on base, the batter's second baseman, Jerry Coleman, batting at 333 with six hits and 18 times at bat. He has two doubles and two runs batted in. He asked umpire Bill McKinley to look over the baseball, which he did, and he tossed that ball out of the game. Players are not accused, Burdett, of throwing a spitter in the series. He has been accused many times by National League managers and by National League hitters. Jerry Coleman, the white handed batter, takes just outside, ball one. The outfield is playing Coleman a little bit towards left, with the infield just a shade towards left, also. No score in the second. Coleman, a right-handed batter. The pitch on the way, and it's a split called over the height of the plate. Evens it up at ball one and strike one. Now Coleman steps out of the batter's box. Ball one and strike one. Jerry Coleman, he's waiting. The pitch swung on. There's a ground ball down the third base line. Fair ball picked up by Matthews. A low throw. Scooped up beautifully by Greg Corey. And what a play. Greg Corey dug a low throw. Out of the dirt. But the really pretty play on that was that he had a back handle ball. And he had to almost go to that runner for it. And it's two out. Two sparkling defensive plays by the Braves here in the second. Wilbur Dapp really ducked out of the way of Matthews. He fell right down to the ground as Eddie came up with that ball. A left-handed batter, Rick, or rather, Joe Collins, takes a strike on the outside corner. Strike one count, Joe Collins, who has been up three times. In the series with no hits. But he is a dangerous long ball threat. Left handed batter with a very pronounced closed stance. Looks at a ball inside, it's even up at one and one. Ball one is 
strike one. Two outs, nobody on breaks, no score in the second. Lou Burdett coming back after two days rest. But Lou said he didn't throw too many pitches last Monday in the 80s. He's beating the Yankees one to nothing. A 1-1 pitch. And it's four outside of the Yankees first baseman, ball two. Collins up of the batter's box. Burdett reminded a lot of the sports writers who were asking him about the two days rest that he was used very frequently in relief in 1953. As a matter of fact, he was out on that bullpen. And in one stretch of that 1953 season, he was in and out of there quite a few times during the span of about 10 ball games. Here's a swing and a roller foul. Ball two, strike two. Man leading over the railing down here. Almost upended himself trying to get that baseball, and I think he reached it. That would have been an awful position to get stuck in because I don't think he would have enjoyed the rest of the ball game for the vantage spot. Ball two, strike two on Joe Collins. Two outs. Burdett's ready, and the pitch is swung on a high foul. Off to the left, up into the crowd, and it's still two and two. Ball two, strike two. Burdett reaching down for the rising sack. He is continually moving on the mound. The 2-2 two -two pitch. A swing and a miss from Collins strikes out. The Yankees are three up and three down. Strikeout number one for Burdett. Nothing across the board in the second. And the score at the end of two innings of play. The Yankees nothing and the Braves nothing. The Braves pitcher, Lou Burdett, will lead off in the third. And Burdett will be followed by Bob Hazel and Johnny Logan. Yogi Berra. Fires out to Jerry Coleman at second base. Around the Yankee infield, the baseball goes back into the mound, and Don Marston getting all set. Pulls down the peak of his cap, reaches down for the rosin sack, and Burnett steps in the batter's box. Lou has no hits in six times at bat. Right handed swinger, and Larson's first pitch is swung on. There's a high foul, third base side. This is in play, and the third baseman, Tony Kubek, looking up into the sun, makes the catch. That's one out. Burdett fouls out. Lou, incidentally, has shut out the New York Yankees for 17 consecutive innings. He had 15 going into today's game. One man is out. Here's right fielder Bob Hazel. And Bob is looking for his first World Series base hit. He has gone hitless in 10 times the fast. Set it better. And the white handed Larson's curveball is swung on. There's a base hit to left field. Bob Hazel just came up with his first World Series base hit. A line drive between Kubat and McDougal. He hit a Larson curveball that was on the left side corner and he hit it where it was pitched. Into left field. And that is hit number two off Larson. Brings up the shortstop, Johnny Logan, who was thrown out by Tony Kubat in the first inning. and checks the runner, delivers, and it's too low with a fastball. Ball one and no strike. Yankee outfield, play Logan towards left field. The wind blowing out to right. Bob Hazel leads off first base. Here is a lob throw to first by John Larson over to Joe Collins. Collins back to the mound. Logan's out of the batter's box. Going through a series of signs in the third base coaching box now. And the one and all pitch is swung on this as Logan that time tried to hit the right field. Something he can do very well. All one and swipe on the count on Johnny. All one strike went down. Hazel leads off first base with one man out. The curve is swung on a pop foul. Yogi Berra digging high towards the stands on the run, and he cannot reach it. Yogi Berra came racing back. He got a late start as he spun around, flipping off that mask, looking for the baseball, and as he spotted it, 
It was not an extremely high pop foul, and Buff did not give Yogi time to get underneath the ball. So there's a break for Logan and the Blaze at ball one and strike two. Larson came down off that mound, all the way down to the plate, and picked up Yogi's mask for his battery mate. Ball one and strike two. Milwaukee has Bob Hazel on first base. With one out. The right hander. Don Larson stretches the pitch. Swung on a high foul first base side. And it's going to be a souvenir for a customer out here at Yankee Stadium. Ball one and strike two. Johnny again was trying to hit the right field. first base. The first baseman Collins is holding him on and Coleman is playing Logan over towards the bag at second, which opens up quite a gap between the two infielders. A one and two pitch and a tie inside ball two. Larson, realizing that Logan has taken uh, two shots at right field, came in close that time of the fastball. Ball two, strike two. Johnny has the power to reach the left field seats here at Yankee Stadium. He did. In the second game of the series, here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and ground ball to the uh, third baseman. Like the second base. High throw. And he is safe at second base. Safe at first base. Here comes Casey out of the dugout. High throw by Tony Kubek. Pulled Jerry Coleman off the line. He went through with the play. And it was safe at second base. And Casey Strangle is arguing with Hockey Donatelli. A rhubarb at first base. And now Casey drives off the playing field. Not too happy. That is an error on the third baseman. Tony Kubak, whose throw was high. And Jerry Coleman leaped up for the ball, came down, missed the bag, and he was throwing at the same time. A fielder's choice and an error. Charge to Kubek. Runners on first and second base. One man is out here. Third baseman, Eddie Matthews. A left-handed batter, and it's way outside for one. Matthews struck out of the first inning. Who hit one of the slots in right center field for two bases yesterday? On his lead off first and second base, there is quite one of the outside corner as Larson keeps that ball away from Matthews Power. Ball one is strike one. That was a perfect pitch. Even up on the Milwaukee third baseman. Ball one is strike one. Bob Hazel on second base, Johnny Logan on first base with one out. Outfield deep to the right. The big right-hander fires away, and it's strike two. On deck, it is center fielder Henry Aaron. Ball one and strike two on Eddie Matthews. Then he gets his sign from Yogi Berra. Blaze runners lead off first and second. One man is out of the third, no score. And the one and two pitch, just outside, ball two. He tried to catch that outside corner of the eye. Ball two with a strike two count. Ready. He fires, and they swing a line drive to right field, right hit. That's what the Milwaukee Blades scoring. The ball is down deep in the corner. Over the big wave around third base. He's calling it for the play. Here comes the relay. He is safe. Teddy Matthews. Lines with over the first baseman's head, riding in two runs. Milwaukee has a 2 nothing lead, and Casey Strangles walking out to the mound. Eddie Matthews with a double down deep into the right field corner. 
driving in his third and fourth runs of the series. And Milwaukee leads the Yankees two to nothing as Hazel scores and Johnny Logan scores. Johnny scoring all the way from first place. And we are on deck. And that is going to be all for Don Larson. Bobby Shams. Five feet six. 151 pounds. Lives in Ambler, Pennsylvania. He is 32 years old. Bobby Shantz making his third appearance. He started the second game of the series, was beaten by Lober at 4 to 2. So here is a softball to go to work on Henry Aaron. Shantz has worked six innings in the series, about six base hits. He's been tagged with one of the Yankee losses, given up four runs, of which three have been earned. One home run. He walked two, and he struck out seven. Bobby Shantz, during the regular campaign in the American League, this tiny southpaw with the heart of a lion appeared in a rather started 21 ball games for KC and completed nine. Had a very fine earned run average of 2.45 and a record of 11 wins and five defeats. So here is Bobby Shantz. Second base with Jerry Coleman in talking to him. The Braves have a runner in scoring position on second base. One man is out. Two runs across the plate. Aaron, who's single for left field in the second, facing the southpaw. Shantz goes into the stretch. And the pitch to Aaron. Curve is low inside. He was trying to swing. Held up with his ball one of those strikes. Ball one, no strike count. Braves have drawn first blood in this final game of the series. Curve swung on a ground ball. It's in a center field. Great hit. Race to the left, race, 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 four. The Michaels in the second race. Aaron holds it first. So Henry Aaron singles to the left of the shortstop, Gil McDougall. And the Braves center fielder, center fielder jumps over the sixth one of the series. And on his start, to John Larson. For your last three runs. Now here's West coming to the left handed batter. And the first pitch. Curves what you call. Three runs across the plate. Right lead, three nothing. Henry Aaron on first place with one man out. Bobby Shantz ready. The winners and it's low outside. Wide breaking curve ball. He was enough to call one and strike one. West coming to sacrifice in the second. That's not bad of a pitch we today. Ball one strike one count. Out to be with Plank coming in around the right. Bobby Shantz fires and a swing of this. He tried to hold up, but it's one and two. Three curveball thrown by Shantz to West Covington, two for strike. Strike two count. Yes, get the sign from there. Aaron on first place. The pitch. Right on curveball is outside. Ball two, strike two. And Covington has seen nothing but breaking pitches. Milwaukee plays have exploded for three runs in the third. is ready. Aaron leads off first. The pitch. A swing and a foul that bounces off the hitter's body. Ball two, strike two. Sonny Ryan keeps walking up and down on that third base coaching box and going through a lot of signs down there. It's coming to jump back on the batter's box. Henry Aaron is watching uh, Tony very closely from first base. Ball two and strike two. Stretch, the winners, and it's way outside, ball three. 
Well, that was a wide breaking curveball. Had a lot of stuff on it. So now, a little softball will have to come in there or find himself with Milwaukee runners on first and second base. All three, strike two. Frank Torrey is on deck. Aaron might be running. Let's see. There's one out. And we reach up first base. Here's the pitch. The swing and a drive. The left center field. It's in for the base net. And the Aaron going around second base on his way in the third base. Corner throws it in the second base. Henry Aaron almost tripped going around the bag in second. A looping swing of the left center by West Covington. The Braves have three consecutive base hits. Three runs of scored. Runners on first and third base of the batter is Frank Story. Two straight hits off Bobby Chance. And Milwaukee has Aaron on third base, Covington on first place, one man is out. Now the Yankee infield is moving in for a play at the plate, although the shortstop, McDougal, has just dropped back a few steps. So has the second baseman. The pitch swung on and fouled back into the screen and put one on Tony. The third baseman, Kubrick, is playing even with the bag. Joe Collins is first base, holds coming to none. And McDougal and Coleman are about halfway. They're not in close on the edge of the infield grass. As they look for a double play ball. Mike went down on Corey. Bobby Jeff puts the round of the infielders. Now he glances at Henry Aaron goes into the stretch. Here's the pitch, the curve, and it's just Inside, ball one and strike one. Right track and base from Felix Mantia in the on deck circle. Ball one and a strike one count. And that's the side, run a beat off first and first base with one out. There's a swing and a ground ball with second base with left, with like a second base out. Over the first place, it is not in time and one score. <laughs> Jerry Coleman to Joe McDougal for the play on West Covington. McDougal throw at Collins was not in time, and Troy receives credit for a run batted in. And it's the Braves four. The Yankees nothing. Story on first place, Felix Mantia, the latter. Two out, curveball inside, all one of those strikes. Bob Grimm and Art Sitmar are now warming up for Casey Strangle of the bullpen in right center field. And Whitey Ford might be out there also listening up. Here's the threat. That ball is outside, it's ball two, two or nothing. Four runs are scored. Enjoying their biggest inning of the series. The previous high was three. There's a swing and a drive deep in the right center field. Hank Fowler taking off, but he's over there to make the catch at least high on the side. Felix Mantia hit one a long way in the right center field. Eight men batted. Four runs scored. On four hits. One crucial error. One man was left on base. At the end of two and a half innings. It is Milwaukee for the Yankees nothing. In the last half of the third inning, Burdett now working with a four-run lead. Will face a pitch batter for Bobby Chan. This is Jerry Lumpy. Jerry Lumpy batting for Bobby Schaff will lead off there in the last half of the first. We'll have a new Yankee pitcher at the top of the fourth inning. Lumpy, Bauer, and Slaughter. will be the first three men to play Bloomer Dett. Lumpy has four hits in 13 times this bat, all singles. Batting a 3-0 way, he picks the ball to touch side. He has one run batted in. Lumpy has delivered twice as a pinch batter. Yankee pitch hitters of the series have had three for six. And that is a very fine mark. 
Ball one, no strike. The flip is strike one on the inside corner. They high enough to even up on what we have ball one and strike one. Two of the four runs scored in the top half of the third were unearned. A ball one and a strike one count on Jerry Lumpy, left-handed batter. Straight away stand, facing right-hander Lou Verdeck. The outfield playing around with the left, the pitch is outside, ball two. Ball two and strike one. Both of these managers readily admitted they go to the bullpen as often as they had to today. There's a swing on a foul that's off to the left, and it's even up at ball two and strike two. So Casey Stengel will go to his third Yankee pitcher in the fourth inning. And it'll be one of three. Grim, Zitma, or Whitey Ford. Ball two and strike two. The pitch outside, ball three. Fielder Hank Fowler on deck. Ball three and strike two. Yankees batting in the last half of the third and trailing four to nothing. Full count three and two. Burdett comes down with a big hit. Swung on and fouled. Out of play. Still three and two. And he's like two count. Yankee pinch batter, infielder Jerry Lumpy. Left handed batter, three two pitch. A swing and a miss, he struck him up. Like that number two for Burnett. And it brings up the right fielder, Hank Fowler. Fowler has the only base hit off the place right handed. He bumps the double just on the line down the left field side. To extend his consecutive batting streak in the World Series to 14 ball games. A new record. One out, nobody on base. Power looks at a ball and throw. Ball one, no strike. The big base hit in the third was a two run double by Eddie Matthews. Aaron delivered a base hit driving in a run, and Corey. Pulling up at first place for the fielder's choice, also going in a run. Here's the 1-0 and pitch, and Bauer swings as they fly ball to the left center field. Going over to Henry Aaron, raising up his right hand, thinking he is ready and makes the catch. Steve Gray, since a couple of uh, collisions during the National League season, have been very careful with each other out there in the outfield. And Aaron that time raised his right arm as he came over to Clark Covington. Running West, no, he had control of the situation. Two men are out. The batter left fielder, Enos Water. Water was safe on the field of choice in the first inning. Outfield playing around towards left with Water, who looks at a ball one. It's too low. Ball one and no strike. Milwaukee has four runs on five hits. The Yankees, no runs and one hit. New York has committed one error. The Blades, no errors. Mickey Mantle's on deck. Left handed batter, country slaughter. Burnett delivers, and it's strike one called outside corner, knee high. He was it up with ball one and strike one. It is remarkable how this fellow just keeps going in the major leagues. He's 41 years old and in tip top condition. The 1 1 pitch. It's fouled off of the third base side, going up on the upper deck, one and two on Eno. One fan back in St. Louis felt very badly, a lot of fans felt badly when Walter Wesley fought, but the one guy out of the bleachers had a favorite saying he'd be yelling Eno all through the ball game. to Waters. And he might have moved into New York City to follow Waters. Ball one and strike two. Left handed batter facing the right hander for death. The one and two pitch, and this one is outside. A breaking pitch, and it's even up at ball two and strike two. Two outs. 
Yankee third. Felix Massey of playing deep at second base. And lined up with white center field. The 2 2 pitch is drawn down to the first baseman, Frank Dory. Big out, picks it up, beats him to the bag, and then retires the drive. Three up and three down to the third. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of the third inning, the score is Milwaukee four and the Yankees nothing. The new Yankees pitcher is Art Dittmar, who hails from the state that once was the home state of the Milwaukee Braves, Massachusetts. He was born in West, uh, Winthrop, stands six feet two and weighs 190 pounds. And Dittmar makes his second appearance in the series. He worked four innings previously. Nothing across the board. One hit, no run. And the first pitch to Crandall leading off is a ball low, ball one and no strike. Art Sitmar replacing Bobby Chant. The outfield playing around to the left for Crandall, who is safe on the field of strikes his first trip, and he takes a strike, and it's even up at one and one. Crandall, Burnett, and Hazel will face Art Sitmar. Bobby Chance, the tiny southpaw, were two thirds of an inning, giving up one run on two hits. No what? No strikeout. Zitmar into the rocking motion, delivers, and there's a swing and a high fly ball down the left field line. Coming over his water towards the line, he's still coming into this ball, now drifting, and he makes the catch for the first out. Crandall flies out to his water left. As that ball started down, it appeared to be drifting away from the foul line, in towards center field, and Porter followed it right to his glove. Now here's Burdett getting a very fine hand. Move, fouled out to the third baseman, Tony Kubek, in the third. One man is out. Nobody on base. Milwaukee four, the Yankees nothing. by Dittmar, and the pitch to Loberdet. One on this set, strike one. And in case you're just joining us, the Braves scored four runs on four hits in the third. An error involved in there. Here's a high foul to the first base side. Better not to be back. This one is going to be in the crowd. And it's a strike two count. Youngsters and oldsters, when they pick up a foul ball at a ballpark, that is a big thrill. Our Dittmar worked about 10 minutes of batting practice today. Here's the pitch, and the curveball is outside, but that was going to swing. He held up and it's ball one and strike two. Great pitcher batting with one out and nobody on base in the fourth inning. Dittmar starts his wind up and delivers. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that is strikeout number one for Dittmar. The first strikeout for Yankee pitchers. Larson started. Bobby Chant came out of the third. Dittmar in the fourth. Bob Hazel, who came up with his first World Series base hit and has sparked the Braves to their four run rally in the third. Struck out of the first inning, so he now has one hit and 11 times as fast. Hazel scores the first run of the ball game. First set, two ball, a ball. Ball one and no strike. As he proved in the third, this kid is not strictly a full hitter, although the Yankee outfield and most of the National League outfield played in the pull around to the right. He could hit that ball down the left field line. Here's the one and no pitch. Hey, a side ball two, and now Hazel. Steps out of the batter's box, looking down at Connie Ryan. Will he get the green light? We'll see in a moment. All two, no strike. He might because the Braves have that 4 nothing lead, and this kid is a free swinger. Zidmar's 2 and 0 pitch is swung on as a ground ball in the right field. Makes it. Bob Hazel comes up with his second straight hit. That gives him two for three, and that is hit number six for the play. And the first play hit off Art Dittmar. That is shortstop Johnny Logan, who has 
fouled it out with third base and was safe on a fielder's choice in the third inning. And the ground ball to Kubrick was thrown high on the attempted double play to Jerry Coleman. And that gave the Braves a big break and they took advantage of it. Scoring four runs. The pitch to Logan and Johnny swings at the ground ball to deep short. Nice play by McDougal. The pitch is dropped. It is dropped. It is quick all around. Two out. Two on. Two on. Going far to his right into the hole, picked up that ball and threw it to Jerry Coleman. Ball popped out of his glove, and the error is going to be charged to McDougal, who is a throw down around the knees. And from our vantage point, it looked like it was on the center field side of second base. So, with one is on first and second base, two men are out. The latter is Eddie Matthews. He takes two ball balls. Score four nothing. Great leading. And Milwaukee has another opportunity with runners on first and second base and two outs. Matthews came through in this situation in the third with a line double down the right field line to score two runs. He struck out of the first inning. Left handed batter. The pitch is that side, and that is ball two. Two and nothing now on the Braves third baseman. on second base, Johnny Logan on first base, Zipmar into the stretch, delivered, and a swing and drive in the right center field, Mickey Mantle going over, getting out of the ball, makes the catch, and that retires the side, in the fourth, no run, one hit, one Yankee error, two men left on base, the score at the end of three and one half inning, it is Milwaukee four and the Yankees nothing. That's out of the fourth inning, and Mickey Mantle will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Yogi Berra and Gil McDougall. Their dad has not completed his warm-up crosses as yet. He is working with a four-run lead. Milwaukee, four runs on six hits. The Yankees, no runs in one hit. That is the fact that second baseman Felix Mantia to Johnny Logan to Eddie Matthews, who handles the ball last in that Milwaukee infield. Mickey Mantle, called out by the pitcher in the first inning. Batting left-handed, a quick hitter. I'll see a plane to the right. And deep for Mickey. With that first pitch, a swing out of this on a changeup. He took something off that pitch. But Mantle took nothing off that swing. He really cut around, and it's like one. Inning. Mickey Mantle watching Lou Burdett. The right hander delivers, and there's a swing and a miss. And it's like two. Like two count. I'm a New York center fielder. Mickey Mantle. Lou Burdett taking his time. Starts Paul the dirt with his right flight view. Now he is ready. And the 0 2 pitch is swung on. There's a high fly ball into right center field. Angel is calling for it. He's coming in, getting under the ball, makes the catch, and that's one out. Mickey Mantle flies out to Bob Hazel in short right center field. So with one out, the batter is Kachi Yogi Mara. Mara was the last Yankee to get on base. Back in the first inning, he walked intentionally. Since that walk, Burdett has retired eight consecutive Yankee hitters. Yogi Berra, left-handed batter, with one out of over the on base. And Yogi takes the ball. It's blowing inside, ball one and no strike. Milwaukee four, New York nothing in the fourth inning. Burdett glancing over to the third base for Eddie Matthews. Here's a 1-0 and pitch. It's one out and foul back on the screen. Rolling down the screen, and it's even up on Barra at ball one and strike one. Yogi Barra. He's 
Swing on that batter out up at the plate. A lot of the hitters don't like to watch for that because he goes through so many motions. Here's a two is called outside corner. Ball one and strike two. Some of the National League hitters will not look and move until he is into that windup. The surgery right hander makes some of the hitters surgery. Actually, he looks like he's extremely nervous on the mound, but he's one of the coolest customers in the, the game. One out, the one two pitch is swung on a line drive to right field. Bob Hazel coming in. He makes the tag. Line shot. Ball was well tagged by Yogi Berra. Two men are out, and the batter is short stop, Joe McDougall. Joe popped out to the third baseman Matthews for first inning with runners on first and second base, retiring the side. As he steps in, there are no Yankees on base, and there are two out. Burdett running a swing has now retired nine Yankees in order. The right handed touches wind up, and the pitch to Gil McDougall is quite one called as again Burnett goes to that outside corner. Outfield is playing McDougal around to the left, so is the infield. Here's the windmill wind up. The pitch is in close the ball. It's even up at one and one. Some of the writers asked Casey Strangle if they thought that Burdett would be, if he thought that Burdett would be wild today after only two days rest. He said he didn't think so. Sometimes the pitcher with only a little bit of rest can continue with that real sharp control. And so far today, Burdett has had it. Ball one, strike one. The pitch is well outside, ball two. Ball two and strike one on the Yankee shortstop with Tony Kubek on deck. Two outs, nobody on base. The Braves are leading the Yankees four to nothing in the seventh and defensive game of this wonderful 1957 World Series. Two one pitch is swung on and fouled off to the right, and the count is even up at two and two. Strike two. Burdett has the sign from Crandall. Right arm pitch is swung on a drive to right center field. Harris coming over on the run. So is Hazel to go now. Bob Hazel makes the catch. Three up and three down. The last half of the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base to score at the end of the fourth inning. It's Milwaukee four, the Yankees something. In the fifth inning, Aaron coming to the story. will face Art Dittmar, incidentally. I imagine that Bob Hazel just tied a World Series record that's been tied by many other fellows, and that is three foot out to the inning. He came racing over there, made a fine catch on Gil McDougall's fly ball to short right center as he handled all three put-outs. Henry Aaron leading off against Art Dittmar has single twice today and driven in one run. He has looped a single to left and hit a ground ball single into left center field that scored a runner in the third. Scoring Eddie Matthews in second base. So for the first time today, he goes against Art Dittmar. He had a single off Larson, a single off Dent. Batter, the outfield playing him around to the left. Dittmar getting his sign from Yogi Berra. And here is the first pitch. It is one of the, down the third base line. Berra pitches through the ball. Oh, that is time. Yogi Berra scrambling that time. Bobble the ball. Through the first place, but Aaron was across the leg. And that's an error. Time to Yogi Berra and the third error for the New York Yankees. The Yankees have committed three errors in the ball game. A runner on first place. Nobody is out. The left fielder West Covington, who has sacrificed his single to center field, stepped into the batter's box. He looks down at Connie Ryan. 
He must be funny now. We'll see as I sit and I get to sign from Yogi Berra. The Yankee infield is looking for a bunt. Both go back at third base and Collins at first place ready to break in. The pitch he is going to bunt, he pounds up the ball, and it's like one. Like one count in Covington as he tried to bunt. To move Aaron in the second base in scoring position. Frank Corey is the on deck hitter. Ray Flea, four nothing, kept running a play. Milwaukee has Aaron on first place with nobody out. Here's the pitch to West, and he bunts one foul behind the plate, and now you'll have to cut away. As he is in the hole with a strike two count. If he tried to punt here and foul tip the ball, he'd be automatically out. A strike two count on West Covington. The tall right hander delivers. The curve is well outside a ball. That was a very tough breaking curve ball. Ball one and strike two. Aaron standing on first place. Now ambles off the bag as Sidmar goes up into the stretch. Here's a one and two pitch and a swing and a long ball down the left field line. It's going up into the upper deck. Ball one and strike two. Count. We're the first running at Yankee Stadium. Braves four, the Yankees nothing. The right hander did my pitch is going out as a ground ball down the first base line. It has to go to first place. Here's the throw. He is out, and Aaron goes into second base. Tony Kubek to Joe Collins. Just as soon as a sacrifice, as coming to was trying to get Aaron over there on a punt, but of course he'll be charged with a time attack. Ball down the third base line, and now Milwaukee has Aaron on second base. Frank Story, the batter, a left handed swinger, and a ground ball hit to Joe Collins. Picks it up, beats him to the bag as Aaron goes over to third. High hit ball by Story right at Joe Collins. One hop. So the Braves now have a runner on third base, and the batter is second baseman Felix Mancia, who flies deep to left in the second. Hit one of the nose. It was caught by Bauer in deep right center field of third. Mancia looking for his first World Series base hit. He has gone over eight. Run around third base with two outs. Sitmar fires away, and a fastball is high inside. That's ball one. Ball one and no strike. Right-handed batter, the second base from Felix Francia. Out field playing him around to the left. The pitch comes down. It's swung on a ground ball to the third baseman. Go back up, throws over the first base. He is out, and that retires the side. In the fifth inning, no runs and no hits. One error. One man was left on base. At the end of four and one half innings, the score is Milwaukee four, and the Yankees nothing. Well, it's time for Bob Neal to take over the microphone here in the last half of the fifth inning and carry you through to the end of the ball game. And Bob, I'd like to say right here, it's been a real sincere pleasure working with you in this World Series of 1957. Thank you very much, you know, and it's a real pleasure to have you with us. And we're ready now as we move to the last half of the fifth inning. The Yankees four runs down. Lou Burdett, who's allowed them only one earned run in the two and four innings, which he has worked uh, two games in the four innings he's worked against them. Tony Kubek's up there, swings and lashes one out in the left center field, going over to St. Garen. Moving out is Covington. Covington going back, grabs it for the out. So Kubek lifts the long fly ball deep in the left field, grabbed by West Covington. As the Yankees try to solve the great pitching of Lou Burdett, who has won two games, pitched two complete games in this 1957 World Series, and who shows time of being as strong now as he was in the first you like to sort of move off and uh, just try to flex it off yourself. It's his left ankle or he fouled the ball off. Many batters, uh, most that I know of in the American League, fellas like Pickworth, even Ted Williams, who are left-hand batters, wear a little portable chin guard over their right ankle so the ball is fouled off, uh, won't triple them up. 
Coleman, whose courage has never been challenged, as attested by not only his performance as a major league ball player, but his service in the Marine Corps, is ready to go. And for depth, one ball, two strikes, with one out, working in the last half of the fifth inning. He's got a big four-run margin as he tries to pitch the Braves for the title. Pass ball is too low, taken for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Tom Sturdivant is working in the Yankee bullpen now. Larson started, worked two and a third. Chen came on in the third, worked two thirds, and Dittmar has worked two innings coming on in the fourth. Here's the windup. Two two delivery. Pass ball inside. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Count curve ball fouled off. Three balls, two strikes remains the count. And with two men and counts to second base, the base belonging to Hank Bauer. Slaughter was tagged and he was out. Madeline right back to the pitcher. Then no uh, great spectacular moment as Lou Burdett gets ready now with a 3 2 pitch and bounce it foul. Ricky Crosetti lets it go by. Braves coming up with four big runs in the third inning. On a single by Hazel, an error by the third baseman for the Yankees, which opened the door. Matthews with a double, Aaron with a single, Cummington with a single. And then before the fire was out, Milwaukee had crossed home plate four times. 3 2 delivery comes down to Coleman. He swings, flashes one out to right center field. He's in it for a base hit. Hank Aaron coming over, feels the ball, holds it to a single. So the first hit off, Blue Burdett in the first inning. As Jerry Coleman singles sharply into right center field. And Burdett now faces Joe Collins. Collins called out on strike in the second inning. had retired 11 straight matters. Mara was the last man to get on for the Yankees when he walked. Then Burdett was able to get McDougal. He retired the side in the order in the second, the third, and the fourth. And here in the fifth, one out, home in the runner's part. Sitting out of Collins. Looks at a fastball, blazing through the middle for strike one. Sun shining brightly in Yankee Stadium. But the Yankee hearts are a little sad. As the Braves lead 4 nothing in this the big game, the final game, the one that decides the title. Warren Spahn is up and throwing now in the Milwaukee bullpen. Burdett with a stretch, Coleman with a lead. Sorry, drops back to pitch, his foot on the opposite field, hit by the third baseman, grabbed by Logan, throws the second for one, throw to first, his backhand of a two way. Nice play by Johnny Logan, the shortstop. Matthews cut over to get the ball, couldn't get it. Logan going in the hole, backhanded, fired at the Mantilla for the force on Coleman. And Mantilla's relay, two light. Nice play by Torrey, saving. A throw that might have gotten by most first basemen. Mack had it beautifully and keeping Collins from going to second. So Bill Cowan is going to come up now to swing for Art Dittmar. Cowan is 0 for 1. Bill being bothered with that fat back. He's feeling better, and he's up there now to see whether he can help the Yankees. Runner first is Joe Collins. Corey holding against the runner with a right-hand batter there. The delivery by Burdett is full on and missed first strike. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's exciting to watch this tall, slender right-hander from Nitro, West Virginia, exploding that fastball, a curve, the slider, and that screwball as he stands out there with all the boys of a fellow who's pitching in a little league game. Delivers now, a swing about to the left side, taken by Logan on one knee, beats it to Mantia, steps on second ahead of Collins, and that's all for the Yankees. So the play goes 6 4 for four on Collins, and in the fifth inning for the New York Yankees, no run, one hit, no errors, and one left on. At the end of five, the score is Milwaukee 4, New York Yankees nothing. New first baseman now for the Yankees, Bill Scarron, who came in to bat for the pitcher, Art Dittmar. He will remain in the game at first base for New York. And the fourth pitcher to be used by the Yankees this afternoon, Tom Sturdivant, comes on to see if he can stop the Braves, hold them off, and the Yankees hopeful of trying to pick up some runs. So the Yankees have used Larson, Chan, Dittmar, and now Sturdivant. Tom Sturdivant, the right-hander, who has 
has been in one game, started one, did not complete it, worked four innings, gave up four hits. Was not charged with the loss, nor given credit for a win. He gave up four runs, all of them earned. And he gave up two home runs. One base on ball, one strikeout. His earned run average is nine for the fourth game starter. Rodell Crandall is the first batter. Right-hand batter, and the pitch to him is piled back on the screen, strike one. Bill Cowan at first base now for the Yankees. As Magic Casey Sengel tries everything that his great knowledge of this game can help to try and get back even. Fred Haney, his great ability, trying to guide his team to a victory. A swing and a foul set dropped by Yogi Barrett back to. Del Crandall has been safe on the fielder's choice in the second inning. He flies the left field in the fourth. Hold on, about to hit by the mound. Hit by the shortstop on the left center field base. This mantle makes a turn at first. Holds up as Mantle comes speeding in. And now there's a rather interesting game going on with Crandall bluffing Mantle and Mantle bluffing Crandall. And Crandall finally winds up going back to first. So Del Crandall greets Tom Servant with a smash. Hit by the left of the mound. Hit to the left of second base in the center field. And for the Braves, hit number seven. And the cheer you hear. Again, demonstrating the warm, sportsmanlike conduct of Yankee fans is a cheer that can only be given to a great champion, whether he wears the uniform of the Yankees or the Milwaukee Braves. Ruberdet. Pitch to him. He tries to put it. Miles it. High fastball. Fouled off. One strike. Burdett up there to sacrifice. Third of it, pumping that ball high and inside. It's Milwaukee four. The Yankees nothing. Four runs, seven hits, no errors for the Braves. No runs, two hits, three errors for the Yankees. Randall base runner first. Bill Scowron holding close against the runner. Coming in close to third, the third base, and the butt is along the first baseline. It is grabbed by Scowron. He feeds it to Colton of sacrifices good. Bill Scowron came in to field the ball, and Burnett's sacrifice is good, and he goes out. From Scowron to Coleman, the first baseman to the second baseman, and Randall moves down to second. One out, one on. And up there now is Pop Hazel. Hazel, who had gone into this game, hit was in ten times at bat. Came up with two hits in his last two times. One of his hits in the third inning, a single. Found the Braves opening up the door in the scoring. He moved to second on error, and he came home in Eddie Matthews' double. So Hazel, wearing number 12, stands deep in the box, bent slightly. Sturdivant gives him a curveball. He fouls it off. Strike one. Yankee outfield shaded slightly to the right. Deep in right field is Bauer. Mantle over in right center. And the right side of the infield backed up with Coleman on the edge of the outfield grass and Scourin deep at first. Hubeck playing about three steps off the edge of the infield grass to serve protecting against the slash on that side by this left-hand batter. Look back to second by Sturdivant. He delivers a curve that hangs outside. One ball, one strike. And one out, and the Braves are flying high with a four to nothing lead. Here's the pitch to him. There goes the runner. The throw is down the third. The tag, and he misses the bag, and he's tagged, and he's out. Umpire Jack O'Connor demonstrating the great knowledge of these umpires, even in a very exciting and critical moment, did not indicate. That he was safer out because as the runner came over, he had missed the bag. Kubek had not tagged him. And then as Crandall overslid over towards the stand, Kubek then tagged him again, and then Common pointed his out. So the play goes from the catcher Yogi Barra to the third baseman, and it's 2 5 if you're scoring with it. Barra to Kubek. Here's the 2 1 pitch. It's swung on. It's a drive, even a right field. It is going deep in the stands. It is foul. Golfing that ball just missed a home run by a matter of feet. And they waited very carefully while the right field umpire, Mr. Charlack, took very close, careful look to make sure that the ball was foul. Bob 
Hazel is back in there now. Two balls, two strikes. Two out. Nobody on for the Braves. This is the top of the sixth inning. Here's a pitch by Sturdivant. A swing and a foul tip. Dropping out of the mid of Yogi Parra. Count remains the same. So Tom Sturdivant, who, like Lou Burdett, has some little nervous action out there on the mound. Burdett, however, can afford a few moments of relaxation because he's got a 4 nothing lead. Sturdivant hangs the arms down, looks into Barra, has the sign. Here's the wind up on the 2-2 pitch, coming down to Hazel. Takes outside, ball three, fastball. Three balls and two strikes now to the left-hand batting, Bob Hazel. Right fielder for the Braves, two hits and three times at bat. He had 0 for 9 going into today's game. There's a swing and a pop-up out into short right field. Hank Bauer moving in, steadies himself, he's got it. That's all for the Braves in the top of the six. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on. At the end of five and a half... For Milwaukee, four. The Yankees, nothing. The Yankee fans are starting to turn their hands. They're clapping. They're kicking. And they're rooting now for New York to get something started in the last of the six. And Lou Burdett's out there just as calm, cool, and collected as he ever could be. Still working. Umpire Bill McKinley, at the request of Hank Maher, is taking a look at that baseball, and he's going to throw that one out. Ball may have been scuffed up a little. So a new ball goes out to Luberdet. And Hank Bauer, who has a double in two times at bat, is up there now to see what he can do about breaking this great, powerful strength that Luberdet is showing against the Yankees. Bauer has hit a home run against Luberdet, who's in the second game of the World Series. Curveball is inside. Ball one. Burdett has a two-hitter going for him. He's walked only one man. That was intentionally, and he has struck out two. Now feels straight away for the Braves. Matthews guarding that foul line at third. Here's the windup. Pitch on the way to Bauer. Strength call with a good fastball over the outside corner. Working the rosin bag. Looking in for the sign from Crandall. Needles on the 1-1. One, one. There's a swing and a smash down to Matthews. One hopper. When he takes it across the first base and Torrey's out. Said he looked for a moment like he might have trouble digging that ball out of his glove. It was hit solidly. Grabbed by Matthews who fires it over to Torrey. And there's one away in the sixth inning for the Yankees. The score, Milwaukee 4. New York Yankees, nothing. Enos Lotter is the batter. Enos has three hits in eight times at bat prior to the day. He's three for ten. Burdett feeds him a fastball over the outside corner, strike one. It is a thing of beauty and joy forever to a manager, to a ball player, to a fan to look down and see Burdett have the great poise and control which he has had. Not in this game only, but in the other two. Here's a one-strike delivery, a swing, and a fly ball hit deep into left center field. Hank Aaron riding high. Moves out. He's got it. So Hank Aaron roaming the wide open spaces of left center field for the Yankees. Hauls in the bit by Ina Slaughter. Then there's two out for the Yankees in the last of the sixth inning, and Mickey Mantle is up. Mantle is 0 for 2. Mickey batting from the left side. Burdett ready. Feeds a fastball. Lined out into right field. A base hit. So Mantle starts things going again for the Yankees as he drives one into right center field for a base hit. Third hit off Lou Burdett. And coming up now is Yogi Berra. Moves to the top step of the dugout for a moment, shouts encouragement, and gives the old double fisted roll, indicating let's go, man, to his ball players. And Lou Burdett didn't like the feel of that baseball, throws it into his catcher, Del Crandall, and asks the umpire to dispose of that one, which he does. Burdett has given up only three hits a double and two singles. Juan Spahn is up and throwing again in the Milwaukee bullpen. The outfield shades around to the right. 
the pitch to Barra. Swings and hits a slight foul up into the upper deck. Back of the Braves dugout. Back at third base. Warren Spahn. Up there throwing. Eddie Matthews, remembering Barra's double inside the line at third, is keeping his eye and his feet close to that third base line. Mantilla is deep at second, and deep in right field is Hazel. The runner leads away. The pitch to Barra. Swings to bounce it down to Matthews. Backs up on the ball. Follows it for a moment. Picks it up. Does not make a throw. That was a tricky play for Eddie Matthews. It was hit to the left side. And Eddie tried to back up on the ball. And in so doing, the ball took a bad hop, hit his glove, and he's charged with an error. So that is only the third error for the Milwaukee Braves. Yankees have three errors in this game. And they have a total of six errors in the series. So the Yankees now have runners at second and first. That's Eddie Matthews' first error. He has come up with some really spectacular plays in the series so far. There's a tough chance for any fielder to come up with. The batter is Gil McDougall. And Lou Burdett is ready to work. And the pitch comes down to McDougall. He swings out, hits a fly ball over near the stands in right field. It is turning foul out of play. There is plenty of activity in the Yankee bullpen now as Casey Tangle up on the top step with his coaches and the rest of his bench strength. Look out there, and everybody is up. They got everybody thrown. They have used Larson, Shams, Dittmar, and Sturdivan. They have Ford out there. Google is up there, one strike, two out, two on. Last half of the sixth inning, Milwaukee four, Yankees nothing. The pitch by Burdett to McDougal is a swing of ground ball on the third baseline. Grabbed by Matthews, steps on third. The force is on Mattel. So again, Lou Burdett, equal to the occasion, comes up with the great pitch. Gets the runner, and in the sixth inning, the Yankees get no runs. They had one hit. There was one Milwaukee error, and two men were left on the bases. At the end of six, it is Milwaukee 4, the Yankees nothing. Then the top of the seventh inning for the Milwaukee Braves, the shortstop Johnny Logan will be the first man up. He has not had a base hit in his three times at bat today, but he's been safe on an error twice. And the one time he was safe, it opened the door also. Takes a look at a curveball from Tom Sturdivan outside, ball one. In the third inning, with Hazel on first, Logan hit a bouncing ball down to the third baseman, Kubek. Whose throwing error enabled Logan and Hazel to stay alive. There's a swing and a one hopper in front of Jerry Coleman, breaking to his left. The ball bounces off his glove. Can't make a throw. Wait now for the official scores to determine whether it is a base hit or whether it is an error. It must be whether Coleman had fielded the ball cleanly would he have been able to retire the runner. And it is a base hit for Johnny Logan. So that is hit number eight. Hit number two off Tom Sturdivant. There's a bundle on the first baseline. Draft by Bill Scourin. Tosses to Coleman covering first and Matthews is out. Sacrificed by Eddie Matthews and the play going from Scourin the first baseman to Coleman covering. And Logan moves to second. So the Braves have a runner on at second base, as they did in the sixth inning, when Crandall opened with a single and was sacrificed over by Burdett. And the batter now is Hank Aaron. Hank has hit safely in all of the series games. He has two hits in three times at bat, was safe on error by Yogi Perra on his punt in the fifth inning. Right-hand batter, he looks down at third base coach, Tony Ryan. Runner second. Johnny Logan leads away. There's a fastball strike one over the outside corner to Hank Aaron. Now Aaron has some fire Bill McKinley to take a look at the ball. Aaron has had, with his two hits today, 11 base hits in 26 times at bat. the top hitter in the Braves for the series as he was 
in the regular season. Six fastball, strike two. The outfield is straight away for the Yankees with Enos Lauder defensively in left, Mantle in center, Bauer in right. The infield has Kubek at third, McDougal at short, Coleman at second, and Bill Cowan at first. With Tom Turvin, fourth Yankee pitcher out there on the mound. Two strike count, comes down with a fastball, strike three. Aaron took the fastball that popped over the outside corner. And so Turdivan, warming to the task, gets his first strikeout. And that's the fourth Brave to go down via the strikeout route today. Larson got the first two strikeouts when he got Hazel. Logan bounced out there to first, and he got Matthews. Right now, the left hand swinging Wes Covington. He has one hit, a sacrifice, then he bounced out. He swings and he misses. Strike one. Outfield for New York is Quest pulled around to the right. Mandolin right center field for this left hand batter. Runner second is Johnny Logan. He leads away. Here's the pitch. Swings and he lines one to Gil McDougal for the out. So in the seventh inning for Milwaukee, no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on. At the end of six and a half, it is Milwaukee four and New York nothing. Half of the seventh inning, Yankee fans are up for the seventh inning stretch. The attendance today, 61,207, brings the total World Series attendance for the great baseball year of 1957 to 394,712. Mitch Dubek ties the bunch, takes the strike. He's going to bunt, pull the bat back, but the ball was over. One ball, two strikes. have left two, three, five men on the bases so far. And in the series, they have now left 41 men on. Here's the one-two pitch. A swing and a slash hit out the left field base hit. Just hit over the shortstop head, rolling out to the left fielder, West Covington. So again, the Yankees get a man on. As Tony Kubek, who will be celebrating a birthday in just a few days, lines one over the Shortstop set in the left field of a set. Hit number four off Hoover Dead. McMahon and Spawn are both throwing for Milwaukee. The outfield now is shaded around to the left as Jerry Coleman with one hit and two times the bat today. Kubek leads away. The pitch is outside. Ball one with a fastball. First by Burnett, the pitch is a sidearm. Bouncer hit back to Burnett, makes the turn, throws the first, and out at first is Jerry Coleman. And a pass thrown down a second, but Dubek, who had made a hard slide in the second, has his fingernails hanging on that bag. So Coleman bounces out one to three. Pitcher, Lou Burnett to the first baseman, Corey. And Dubek is moved to second. And uh, Lumpy is going out to the bullpen. It may be that we're going to have Alston Howard come in as a pinch hitter. So the entire focal point at the moment is on the right center field bullpen occupied by the Yankees as we wait to see whether Casey Tingle is going to make the nod out there for somebody to bat for Tom Sturdivant. batting in the number eight spot. And we're still waiting for that uh, going over now on umpire Bill McKinley. Asking him uh, how come the delay. Here comes manager Fred Andy out to ask. Umpire Bill McKinley. And you see what's happening. They're looking out to right center field, but coming through a special passageway that runs from there under the sand is Elson Howard. coming out through the subterranean cellars that run underneath the Yankee Stadium. And now he has come along. So Elson Howard is up here in the seventh inning. Yankees trailing four to nothing. The Milwaukee Braves leading. Burdett has given up only four hits. And that's the third pinch to be used by the Yankees today. Lumpy came up in the third inning for Bobby Shan. And uh, he did not make it. 
Brown, who came up for the pitcher, Art Dittmar, and who remained in the game. He's not able to do it. So Elton Howard is up to see if he can. Howard, the right-hand batter, is perhaps best remembered in the series play so far for his home run off Warren Spahn that tied up the ball game. As Warren Spahn made a bid and eventually did win. Now Howard has some fire. McKinley take a look at the ball. As Burdett out there on the mound pitches around. Second. Here's Tony Kubek. Here's a pitch to Howard. Swing and fouls it off. Strike one. Howard has been in five. This makes his sixth game of the World Series. He's had three hits in ten at bats. One home run has three runs batted in, and he goes in today with a 300 batting average. Johnny Logan and Del Crandall have a visit with Lou Burdett. Visit is over. And Elson Howard looking down to Frankie Crosetti and watching out to Charlie Keller. Keller bouncing up and down at first base, clapping his hands. Burdett ready to work. Stretches, looks at the second delivery. There's a pitch blown outside. One ball, one strike. Last half of the seventh inning. Pitch now to Howard. Swing and slices a foul upstairs off the railing, back downstairs in the playing field. One ball, two strikes. On deck is Bill Cowan. Number 32, Elson Howard, who plays the outfield, who plays first base, who catches. It's the sign from Dal Crandall. Kubek at second looking in, also checking on that sign. Here's the check of the runner, the one two pitch, the side arm, flat ball, swing it in, right three. Over net. Falling on all the cunning at his disposal, comes in with that side arm crossfire pitch. And Red Shady, although not able to fly because of a full leg muscle up on the second step of the dugout, Looking out, he has been positioning Felix Mantia. And that shows you some of the great cooperation between the, the Braves. Shane Dean, although out of the spotlight up there trying to help the youngster filling in for him. The matter now, Bill Scarlett swings and hits a one-hopper to Logan. He makes the throw to first, long throw, grabbed by Torrey, and the side is retired. So in the seventh inning, no run, one hit, no errors, one man left on for New York at the end of seven. It is Milwaukee 4 and the Yankees nothing of the World Series of 1957. The fifth pitcher to be used by the Yankees starts to move in from right center field. And it is Tommy Byrne coming in. Tommy Byrne, the left-hander, coming on to work in the top of the eighth inning. John Larson started for New York, lasted two and one-third innings. is charged with three of the four runs picked up by the Braves. He gave up three hits, one walk, struck out two. Bobby Chan came on to the third, worked two-thirds of an inning, gave up two hits. Uh, did not walk about it, nor did he strike out one. He gave up one run. Dittmar worked two innings. And Tom Servant worked two innings. Servant gave up two hits, no runs, and struck out one. So Tommy Burns, who has a great many years of experience at his disposal, being brought in by Casey Stengel in the hopes of holding off, the Braves, from adding any additional runs to their total, they have four. And when you have none, that four could be as big as 44. Tommy Byrne has worked one game, worked one in the third inning, gave up one run, which was earned, had one strikeout, hit one hit batsman, and his earned run average in the series is 6.75. To the first baseman for the Milwaukee Braves, Frank Torrey. He's walked, he's forced the runner, and he's grounded the first baseman. Burn the left-hander looking into Yogi Berra. The outfield straight away. The wind-up and the pitch on the way now to Torrey, a left-hand batter. Fast ball going into there. Ball one. <laughs> Milwaukee Braves four and the New York Yankees nothing. As Burn is set to deliver. Flips that ball from his glove to his pitching hand. He winds and he pitches. And it's a fast ball inside for ball two. Tommy Burn. In a little while now, as Frank Torrey, a left-hand batter, who stands deep in that box, looks down to third base coach Tony Ryan. And then they have him swinging away with a four-to-nothing lead. This youngster can pull that ball. Here's the two-nothing pitch to him. He takes it inside, ball three. Three-nothing. So now again, Torrey looks to third base coach Ryan. 
Yankee Mano pulled around to right center with his arms folded. Deep in right field is Hank Bauer. Three nothing takes to the young first baseman is inside ball four. And Torrey is on to the top of the eighth. Face on ball. Yogi Barra moves out to visit with his pitcher. That is only the second walk given up to the Milwaukee Braves this afternoon. Torrey has received both of them. A walk in the second inning, and he walks here in the eighth. Up now is Felix Mencia. Felix the Cat, they call him. He can run uh, with the speed of a scared rabbit. And he has today demonstrated that he has some power. He hits the ball deep in the left field, deep in the right center in the third inning. He's bounced out third to first. Both for three. Throw to first by Byrne, who has a very good motion over there. Bill Cowan playing at first. Returns the ball. Now field straight away. The stretch by Byrne. Look to first in the pitch. And a swing and a bouncer to McDougal. Throws over to Coleman for one. Throw to first. And it is a double play. What looks like a rather slow bounder hits the left side. Finds McDougal shuffling to Coleman to Scourin. And the double play turned in. Story wiped out. That is the fifth double play turned in by the Yankees in the series. The Braves have turned in 10. Right now with two out is the catcher Del Crandall. Here's a windup by Byrne in the pitch to the right hand batter. It's a fast ball for a strike. Top field straight away for the Yankees as we play in the top half of the eighth inning. The final game of the World Series, the one that decides everything. The next pitch to him is a curve inside for ball one. One ball, one strike. Milwaukee, four runs, eight hits, one error. New York Yankees, no runs, four hits, and three errors. Here's the windup and the 1 1 pitch. And oh, he takes the curve ball inside, ball two. Two balls, one strike. Ryan, facing nervously in that third base coach's box. And the windup and the 2 1 delivery is the curve that's low, ball three. Three balls, one strike. As the veteran, Tommy Burns. The fifth pitcher to be used by the Yankees today. Second left-hander. Here's the windup, 3-1 pitch. Crandall swings and fouls it back on the screen, and it's a 3-2 count. With two out, nobody on. Braves batting in their half of the eighth inning. Braves got four big runs in the third inning. On four hits, one Yankee error. And they have made the four runs stand up there. The scoreboard attendant must have a sore finger from pushing that zero button. Here's the pitch now. 3 2 is swung on, popped up back of the plate. Coming back to Sarah, maybe on a screen. Still digging for it, and he can't get it. Out of play. Yogi really came pounding back there, but the ball was not hit high enough for a catcher to come back and get under it. So, no play. Three balls, two strikes. And El Trano has the light. are disposed at this moment to relax. Because while the Braves are fat, the Yankees can do nothing about changing the zero, indicating their number of runs. Burns flips the ball from the glove to the hand, and the 3-2 pitch comes down, and there's a drive deep in the left field, going way back for it. It is one, and it is... Did he catch it? It is a home run. Five to the Braves. No 
nothing for the Yankees. That's the story here in the top of the eighth inning. Two out, nobody on, one, two pitch. It's one on, right foul. Dell Crandall. Getting his first World Series home run. And getting his fourth hit in the series. He had a single in the sixth inning. Here's Byrne, ready to watch. The one-two pitch comes down, and it is inside low ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Byrne wants a new ball. Milwaukee Braves with a big five-run margin. We're just wearing number 33, standing deep in the right-hand batter's box. Here's the pitch coming down from inside. Two strikes now to Burnett. Outfield straight away. Here's a payoff pitch coming to the fine pitch for the Braves. Swings and he fouls it off. Down to Maine. Three and two. Gentlemen sitting back to the front box. Three up made a beautiful grab. So it is three balls, two strikes. The breeze going on towards right field. to work. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Outside, ball four. And Burnett draws a walk. So Burns, who started this inning by walking Torrey, who got helped when Mantia bounced into a double play, who got tinted when Crandall hit a home run, has now issued a pass to Burnett. And listen to the reception he gets as he moves to first base. The pitcher is now Burdett the runner. And uh, is going to have a pinch hitter for the Milwaukee Braves. Andy Pasco is coming up to swing for Bob Hazel. Pasco, right hand batter. He has been in five games, now making his appearance in his sixth game in the series. He has three hits and 13 times the bat. Strike one. Tommy Byrne, number 23, walks slowly back out there to the top of the mound. The outfield is pulled around to the left. Big hole open in right center field. Stretch by Byrne, looks at first, they pitch them down and inside. One on one. Standing out there at first base with his jacket on as Gowan plays back to the runner. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. The swing and a pumper to the right side. Gowan says he'll take it. Moves into foul territory right near the fungo circle and he grabs it. So Pasco batting for Hazel. Foul to the first baseman. In the eighth inning for the Milwaukee Braves, they get one run on one hit. There were no errors. One man left on. At the end of seven and a half innings of play, the score of Milwaukee 5, New York Yankees, nothing. Of the eighth inning for the Yankees. And one of the last two opportunities for the Yankees to try and solve the great pitching mastery of Lou Burdett. Burdett, who goes into this eighth inning, having given up only four hits, who has, with his ability, found six of the Yankees stranded on the bases. Moves in now to the last half of the eighth inning in Hank Bauer. A double and three times the batter, a right-hand batter. And the Milwaukee Braves defense pulls around to the left. Matthews guarding that foul line at third. Covington deep in left field and pass goes out in right field. Here's the pitch outside, ball one. Pasco came in to pass for Hazel in the eighth inning. He remains in the game. He's out in right field. Here's the one ball pitch. Outside, ball two. The fastball, two and nothing. Very calm. Takes a look up into the skies. Plane going over the Yankee Stadium, and Burdett takes a little look at it. Try to get his mind off the fact that he's working in a tense moment. There's a swing and a long drive deep into left field. Foul! Way up off the facade, and it bounces back down to the playing field. So it's two balls, one strike now to Hank Bauer. Burdett who went from the Yankees 
to the grave on August the 29th, 1951. Back here to Hahnem, and there's a fly ball hit out into shallow left center field. Logan backing up, mounts his miss, and he grabs it. One away as Hank Power pops the Johnny Logan out into short left center field. And the batter now is Edith Country Slaughter. He got on in the fielder's choice in the first inning. Point out when the upper ran first base, the ground is to get power and slaughter was there to give it. Here's the first base, the third, fly the center, the second, pitch gone. Swing and a miss to the fastball, strike one. Over this, puppies are hunting and fishing. He has been hunting for a chance. Pitch against the Yankees in the World Series, and he's fishing for his third victory. Next pitch to Slaughter, fastball inside low, one and one. Six foot two, 180 pounder. Working just as carefully as he possibly can. His Braves are leading five to nothing over the Yankees in the last half of the eighth inning. Pitch to Slaughter, outside with a fastball, two balls, one strike. an air of confidence that seems to radiate from Mr. Burdett as he moves around on that mound. Two balls, one strike, one out. He is law to the batter. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. So it's two and two now to Country Slaughter with Mickey Mantle on deck. Milwaukee with five runs, nine hits, and one error. The Yankees with no runs, four hits, and three errors. Here's the windup and the 2 2 pitch to Slaughter. Swings and pops it to the left side. Moving in foul territory is the catcher, Crandall and Matthews, and Crandall is under six. So Slaughter fouls to the catcher, Dell Crandall, two away in the last half of the eighth inning. And the batter now, Mickey Mantle. The Braves five, the Yankees nothing. Trying to wrap this one up. Mantle batting from the left side has one hit three times at bat. This is one on a long fly ball. Hits the deep left center field. Moving over there is Cunningham. Still backing up. And he's got it. So in the eighth inning, the Yankees get out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And at the end of eight innings of play, the score, Milwaukee 5, the New York Yankees, nothing. Top of the ninth inning now is Tommy Byrne, who came on to work for the Yankees in the eighth. Continuing in the ninth inning. And for the Milwaukee Braves, with a five-run lead, they will send up the shortstop, Johnny Logan, third baseman, Eddie Matthews, and Hank Aaron. And there is a great hum of sound now coming out of the stands as the Milwaukee Rooters here in Yankee Stadium begin to feel that the Braves are one big step closer to being the champions of the world. So we shall see as the Shortstop for the Milwaukee Braves, Johnny Logan, steps in a right-hand batter. Johnny has played a very important part in this series with his spectacular play of field and the resounding bat. Tommy Byrne is all set to go. Looks into Yogi Barra. Five runs, nine hits, one error from Milwaukee. Here's the pitch by Byrne. Logan swings and lands one to the third baseman. Tony Kubek, one out. One pitch, one swing, one out. Logan really wrapped that ball, but right to Tony Kubek. And it brings up Eddie Matthews. He sacrificed in the seventh, fly to center in the fourth, double in the third. And it was his double that brought home the first two Milwaukee runs that really started the merry-go-round to gone. He was called out in strikes in the first inning. Left-hand batter, outfield pull to the right. Burn the left-hander, deals him a fastball, strike one over the outside corner. next pitch. The swing and a bouncing ball to Jerry Coleman. One hop. Throws to Scourin. Out number two. Second to first. Coleman to Scourin. Two out for the Braves in the top of the ninth. And Hank Aaron 
Moves out there now with two hits in four times the bat. Look my hand, he gets. Thank Aaron being given the accolade that he is so deserving of. Here's a pitch by Burns, the right hand batter outside with a fastball ball one. Field, shaded just a few steps around to the left. Here's the one ball pitch by Byrne. A big curve outside and high ball two. Milwaukee, five runs, nine hits, one error. New York Yankees, no runs, four hits, and three errors. And we're playing in the top of the ninth inning in Yankee Stadium. The deciding game of the World Series. The pitch to Aaron. That ball outside. Ball three. up three nothing delivery to Aaron he is over the outside corner to Bell strike one three balls one strike two out nobody on three one pitch he is strike two call with a fastball over the outside corner to knee full count now to Aaron Two strikes. Here's the payoff pitch by Burns to Aaron. Swings it to fly ball deep in the center field. Mantle moves back, has lots of room, and he's under it and he takes it. So in the top of the ninth inning for Milwaukee, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. He's the middle third of the batting order. Para, McDougal, and Kubek. That has. Silence the mighty Yankee bats with four base hits to double the power in the first inning. Then it was not until the fifth inning when they were able to get another base hit off his offering. In the sixth inning, they got a single by Mantle. In the seventh, they got a single by Kubek. He has three strikeouts. And Burdett has walked only one batter. So here we go into the last half of the ninth inning. A historical ninth inning for the Milwaukee Braves, they hope. And the last hope for the New York Yankees in this, the 1957 finale. Here's the pitch now to Barra. He swings and he lifts a high popper to the infield. Sorry, with his arms waved out, moves in near the bag. He takes it in about two feet of fair territory. So Barra is out number one for the Yankees in the last half of the ninth inning. And the Braves are two outs away from becoming the world champions. The batter now is Gil McDougal. He has no hits in three times at bat today. Red Shandy says he has been most of the afternoon again, positioning Felix Mancia. Here's a pitch to him. He swings at it and fouls it back on the screen. Gil McDougal standing up there with a one strike count. Outfield for the Braves shaded just a few steps around the left. Big hole open in right center field. Matthews backed up for about three steps off the grass at third. The pitch to him is a curveball outside. One ball, one strike. Burdett not looking the least bit tired. His last time out, they say he used only 87 pitches. He's ready now with a 1-1 delivery to McDougal. He checks his swing. He takes a fastball high and inside. Two balls, one strike. The Braves five. The Yankees nothing. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. One out. The Yankees standing now as the defending champion trying to come back. Here's the 2 1 pitch, a side armor. Pump foul coming back near the screen. It's out of play. So it's a two ball, two strike count now to Gil McDougal, Del Crandall. Looking back for that ball. It hangs on the net. And it's sitting right there back at home plate. Oh, it's two balls, two strikes. Burdett looking in for the sign. Is ready to work. Here's the windup. Pitch on the way to McDougal. A side armor. Lined out into right center field. It's a base hit. So the Yankees are still alive as McDougal slaps the single into right center field. Only the fifth hit. Oh, truly one of the great right-handers that has pitched in any World Series game. Lou Burdett. McDougal on at first. And Tony Kubek, the young man from Milwaukee, who has one hit and three times at bat, is up there now. He singled his last time up. He flies to left. He's bounced to third. Matthews with that left-hand batter up there guarding that foul line. The outfield shaded around to the opposite field. 
They're giving him right center field. Pitch by Burdett. And it's one on a fly ball hit to the right center field. Hank Garrett moving back there very casually. He's under the section. There's two out. Now in the last half of the ninth inning, the Braves leading five to nothing, and Jerry Coleman moving up there as Burdett moves out to Johnny Logan to get the ball. Bill Carm will bring you a brief summary after this game, and then we'll take you down to the winning clubhouse. So it's two out. Jerry Coleman, who has one hit and three times at bat, represents the last hope for the Yankees. As McDougal, a base runner first. Old tight. And now the umpire at second base, Joe Paparella, holds up time. And some of the Yankee fans, or I'm presuming the Yankee fans, or just baseball fans, were hanging over the fence out in left center field. They moved out of the bleachers. And naturally, uh, umpires wanting to make sure that in the event a fly ball might be hit out that way, that a fielder would not be interfered with an over-anxious or over-zealous fan. So they moved them back out of there and looped that who is anxious to step into that coveted spot in history, is ready, and he delivers to Coleman. The side-on fastball strike one. Burdett, standing back to the rubber, seems calm and cool as he pops that rosin back down on the mound. Jerry Coleman standing in there. McDougal leads away. Here's the one strike pitch. A swing and a little slicer going into right field. It's in the probation. hit. McDougal holds his second as Andy Pasco makes the throw into Mancia. So Coleman delays momentarily the Braves celebration as the Yankees lead five to nothing. And now the Yankees have six hits off Luberdet. And manager Casey Singles where the pitcher to the bat goes to his bench. The fans who have started for the exit ways have stopped, and they're all looking on. Gary Coleman brings his plastic liner back in, get his regular baseball cap, and as the clouds move in, white, fleecy clouds, almost as a, well, a forerunner of uh, the banners and the ribbons and the horns that the Milwaukee fans hope that they will be able to utilize. Coleman takes time. And moving out now is Tommy Byrne, who's going to wrap for himself. Tommy, as you know, is a pretty good man with his wood. And Casey Stengel, taking it, Tommy Byrne, a left-hand batter, who will do just as well, is going to let Byrne bat for himself. In the regular season, Byrne hit for a 189 average, had three home runs and eight RBIs. In 37 times of bat, he had seven hits. So Byrne is up there now. Tommy Byrne stands between Lou Burdett and the Milwaukee Braves and the championship of the baseball world. Here's the pitch to Byrne. That ball is inside low ball one. McDougal, the base runner in second. Jerry Coleman is on at first. Two men out in the last half of the ninth inning. Braves five. The Yankees nothing. Braves with five runs on nine hits and one error. The Yankees have no runs, six hits and three errors. The outfield is pulled around to the right. Some of the fans have released paper from the stands floating around. Burdett looks back to the runner second. Delivers to Byrne. A strike over the inside corner. One and one. There's an expectancy in the air that's almost as it was when Don Larson was reaching for his great fame in the fifth game. Fans, whether they be Yankee fans or Brave fans, now rooting for Luber Deck. 1-1 one, one pitch is a strike over the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. Luber Deck, perhaps now just starting to feel the great responsibility that rests on his arm, even though he's enjoying a five-run lead. With two men on. And a one ball and two strike count on Tommy Byrne. Stretches now, looks to the runners, and here's the one-two pitch. Coming down, a bounce to the left to right side. Knocked down by Mancia, and no play is possible. The bases are loaded for the Yankees. as a base hit. Mancia did a great job in just knocking the ball down and keeping a run from coming in. 